Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here today. My name is Amelia Earhart, and I am delighted to be here with you as we all celebrate our region and our accomplishments. Now, you may have seen me on TV. I've been a reporter, a broadcaster, and just like my namesake, Amelia Earhart, I'm a pilot as well. In 2014, I circumnavigated the globe in a single engine airplane to recreate her journey. And while I've now stepped away from telling the region stories as a journalist, I still relish the opportunity, of course, to be a part of the community and celebrations just like this one. Of course, throughout my charity work, as well as speaking engagements all around the world, they give me the opportunity to talk and represent Colorado and all of our state's residents from all walks of life. So again, it's truly my pleasure to be here with you today. Now, of course, we were originally planning for this event to happen more than a year ago and for it to be in person at Empower Field at Mile High. Now, like you, of course, I wish that we could all be together. But there are, of course, so many things we've missed out on together. We're healing now from loss and facing the economic effects of COVID-19. We miss those carefree and spontaneous ways that we used to be able to connect with our loved ones and keep our communities safe as we've taken measures to keep one another safe as well. So before we move into the celebratory portion of today's event, what I do want to do is talk about what we've got planned here for you today. Now, I do want to acknowledge, of course, that these are not ordinary times. We've weathered days of distance and disruption, as well as a lot of disappointment. And as much as we may have come out stronger on the other side, we will be forever changed as a result. Gathering virtually, of course, is not what we prefer, but it is what we have chosen. It's a way to do our part until it's safe to gather in person again. Now, I miss the energy and the excitement of the in-person celebration, the clink of catering service, the thrum of our colleagues' voices, the photos I have taken with so many of you after the events, and of course, the laughter of our friends. Today's celebration won't have those elements, but we are looking forward to honoring the individuals, communities, and organizations that have done so much to improve and maintain the quality of life in our region. We will have some fun along the way as well with interactive trivia, trivia about our region. And of course, you all know that we're very excited to hear from our slate of speakers, including our board chair and past chairs, Dr. Codd's executive director, as well as our esteemed John V. Christensen award winner. So Excel Energy is a partner to many of our member governments and a longtime friend of Dr. Cog. That relationship continues with Excel as the presenting sponsor of today's event. So let's hear a brief message from Excel. At Excel Energy, we're going carbon free by 2050. We'll use the energy of the wind and the sun, but other things too, all kinds of energy because energy is everything. It's intelligence, and it's vision, and it's imagination. Sometimes energy even comes in 16 fluid ounce cans of caffeine, you know, just to get us through. Energy is good vibes. It's a road trip powered by electricity. Energy is science, like really high tech super science. And it's you, your energy, supercharged by a bajillion, million, zillion volts of optimism. Together, we'll get to cleaner, safer, less expensive energy for a carbon-free future. Everything is energy. Energy is everything. Excel, thank you so much for your support. Now, we're going to kick off today's celebration with some remarks from Governor Jared Polis. Hello everyone, I'm honored to be a part of the Denver Regional Council of Government's annual awards celebration today. It's been a year of challenges for our state, our nation, and the world. But throughout it all, I've been so impressed by the efforts of Coloradans stepping up to help the most vulnerable, to wear masks, to keep a social distance, to help save the lives of our friends and neighbors, maybe even ourselves. As we begin to emerge from this pandemic with more and more people getting vaccinated every day, schools and businesses reopened, and life is slowly returning to normal, I'm excited about what lies ahead. Coming together to celebrate this region's accomplishments, even virtually, should make us grateful as well as hopeful for a brighter future. Dr. Cog holds a unique position in the region. For more than 60 years, Dr. Cog has been bringing local governments together to work on the region's most pressing concerns, transportation, growth, development, housing, 
the unique needs of our aging population, this region has a well-earned reputation for getting things done. And it's no surprise the Denver metro area is consistently rated as one of the best places to live, raise family, and retire in the whole nation. That's not by accident. I wanna thank Dr. Cog's staff and board of directors for your response during the pandemic, particularly in support of our aging adults to help save lives and save livelihoods. More broadly, the state appreciates your continued efforts to improve lives for people of all ages, incomes, and abilities. Congratulations to each of today's honorees. Your projects and plans and contributions are truly making life better in the Metro Denver area. Well, good morning. We are grateful to Governor Polis and his remarks on, his, on this special day. I want to echo his appreciation to each of our local governments, which has truly demonstrated their resilience this past year. Every day as Dr. Cog's executive director, I get to see how maintaining regional connections keeps our community strong. Pandemic has definitely forced us to adapt, but I have no doubt we'll come back stronger than ever. We've become accustomed to words that now seem overused, like unprecedented and unexpected. But recently, there's been a shift in the words we're hearing and saying. We're beginning to talk about uh, a cautiously optimistic return to some pre-pandemic activities. Our theme for today's gathering is reunion, an intentionally hopeful watchword that follows the year of challenges. So while this reunion is happening virtually, it's a small step towards resuming the rhythms and, and routines that mark the lives of our communities and their residents. We've, re we've remained committed to the aspirational vision of our region that is expressed in MetroVision and which our award winners exemplify. Today, we reunite our member governments, community organizations, corporate partners, and the region's residents for a celebration of the resourcefulness that each of you has brought to our cities, towns, and counties. So on behalf of Dr. Cog's staff, I wanna thank you for taking time to celebrate with us. We'll look back at some of our recent accomplishments and we'll look forward to a future enlightened by part of the partnerships which garner accolades for our region as a national leader. So with that, Amelia, it's my honor to turn it back to you to introduce the next interactive section of our program. Well, thank you, Doug, that is very well said. And on that reassuring note, let's pivot to something really fun. We've got some trivia for you here today. Here's where you local wonks can get to share your knowledge of our region. Now you can respond to the question using the website polling feature. Just click the purple polls icon on the right side of your screen. A panel will open with a list of choices. So go ahead and pick the one that you think is correct. All right, in honor of this virtual event being our first rodeo, let's talk about one of the region's favorite pastimes. Here's our very first trivia question. Which Dr. Cog member government claims to have hosted the first rodeo in the world? Remember, you can select an answer from one of the options on your screen. So take a moment to choose the correct response. And as you give it some thought, go ahead and list your answer. All right, I think we are getting some answers coming in here. So thank you guys so much. We'll have some trivia scattered all throughout our event today. The correct answer is Deer Trail, Colorado. All right, thank you guys for that fun break. We're now gonna switch gears one more time to hear some thoughts from Dr. Cog's board chair. At this time, I'd like to introduce Chair Ashley Stolzman. Thank you for being with us today, Amelia. It's truly an honor to have such a distinguished MC for our celebration. On behalf of Dr. Cog's Board of Directors, I want to welcome all of you who have joined for today's celebration of regional achievement. Much like the Super Bowl and other major events of this type, we're aware of at least one watch party in the region. A special shout out to Greenwood Village's watch party. Thank you for joining. Among us are the elected officials from 58 cities, towns, counties, all around the Denver region. These leaders serve in many roles in our communities as engaged residents, businesses, neighborhood leaders, and in their elected and appointed capacity. Those of us on the Dr. Cog board assume the responsibility of representing the interests of our very own communities, but at the same time, really important that we're all working to advance the priorities of the entire region. Our perspectives are informed by community priorities, but at the Dr. Cog table, we engage in meaningful dialogue with our neighbors, and ultimately we act in the interest of the entire metro area. As board chair, it's my honor today to acknowledge the board officers that are all with us. 
Our vice chair is Kevin Flynn. He's the city and county of Denver council member. Our secretary, Steve Conklin, the city of Edgewater, Mayor Pro Tem. Our treasurer, Wynn Shaw, city of Lone Tree council member. And our immediate past chair, John Dyack, uh, Parker, city council member. These individuals go above and beyond the already significant commitment of board of directors, and we're so grateful for their As the legislative session winds down, we know these are unpredictable times for our state elected officials. Nonetheless, as of this morning, several of our state senators, representatives, and members of the staff have planned to be with us today. We are so privileged to have staff from our congr congressional delegation joining us as well. Thank you all for representing our region at the state and national levels and for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. The success of our region depends on the cooperation and partnership of so many people and organizations. Today, we're celebrating the ways that people and programs have made a difference at all levels, from our neighborhoods to our state and nation, with admiration and counterparts of our counterparts across the entire country. Now it's my privilege to hand it back to our MC, Amelia. Thank you so much, Chair Stolzman, and to all the public servants who have made time to be here today. Now, before we jump into our recognitions, the primary reason that we are all here, let's see who's paying attention by launching our very next trivia question. Well, as you know, getting to this point has been a collective long road. And speaking of long roads, did you know that Colfax Avenue is the longest continuous commercial street in America? Of course you did. You live in Colorado. But I'm curious to know who in this room knows just how long it is. Once the options appear on your screen, please choose the answer that you think is correct. All right, it looks like a lot of you are pretty familiar with Colfax Avenue. Those of you who picked 26 and a half miles are correct. And that means you could run the entire Colfax Marathon along just this one street if needed. All right, and now the portion I know a lot of you have been here waiting for, our big announcement of the Distinguished Service Award winners. Each year, Dr. Cog honors outstanding Denver region residents who embody collaboration and cooperation when tackling the metro area's challenges. So join me in celebrating this year's eight Distinguished, Awards, Distinguished Service Award winners. The Denver Regional Council of Government's Distinguished Service Awards are brought to you by XL Energy for his work with the Colorado Senior Lobby, Bob Bracker exemplifies what strong leadership can do for organizations that help older adults. As president of the lobby, Bob's organizational vision helped secure its future. An active member of the Dr. Cog Advisory Committee on Aging, he also participates in the Movers and Shakers in Aging program made up of leaders from the healthcare and education industries who meet to discuss strategies for providing care for older adults. He also serves as a board member for A Little Help, a community organization that supports older adults who live independently. Through his advocacy on behalf of older adults, Bob has helped create a future for the Denver region where residents can comfortably and safely age in place. Thank you for making our region a better place to live. Congratulations. City of Lakewood's principal traffic engineer, Matt Duncan knows firsthand how safe and efficient roads can improve quality of life for residents. And as an active longtime participant in Dr. Cog's Regional Transportation Operations Working Group, his expertise benefits the entire region. His passion for transportation improvement and focus on safety exemplify the Distinguished Service Award, which honors collaboration and embracing opportunity. A member of the newly formed Advanced Mobility Partnership Working Group, his contributions reach far beyond Lakewood just as his work with multiple national committees influences traffic safety practices across the country. For his commitment to better safety and transportation and his advocacy for improving access to commute options, he has truly earned this recognition. Congratulations! Coloradans know how precious our water is. Ensuring all residents have access to safe, clean water is a serious responsibility. During his time at the City of Westminster, Stu Feinglass used a research-based strategy to establish effective water-saving practices that ultimately benefit the whole region. 
Working collaboratively with other city agencies, Stu pioneered an approach to developing water demand projects that allowed the city to predict water use based on patterns. The framework gives the City of Westminster the knowledge to better understand the effects of growth and development on water availability in the region, and serves as a model for other jurisdictions planning for development while safeguarding access to water for residents. Even retired, Stu finds ways to ensure the city's continued success managing its water supply by sharing strategies with local government planners and water utilities and serving on advisory panels whose work has statewide impact. Thank you for your contributions and congratulations! During the nearly 20 years Janice Finch worked at the city and county of Denver, the state's population grew by more than a million people. The work to respond to the transportation challenges arising from that growth is ongoing. Through her contributions to Dr. Cog's Transportation Advisory Committee, Janice used her expertise to develop models benefiting the whole region. As a member of the Dr. Cog Transportation Improvement Program Policy Workgroup, Janice helped recommend, develop, and ultimately implement the dual funding allocation model, which was adopted for the 2020 to 2023 TIP. A savvy and eloquent advocate for the region, Janice worked closely with several Denver government administrations to champion solutions for developing the region's transportation system. Thank you for always putting the region first. By 2040, one in four Coloradans will be 65 or older. Finding ways to engage older adults ultimately shapes the character and values of our region. And while looking at trends and data helps us understand part of the story, it takes a personal approach to see the full picture to understand how to help older adults thrive. In her role with the Denver Office of Aging, Perla Gaylor tackles the challenges of supporting the region's older adults by combining data with a people-first approach. By analyzing the needs of older adults, she was able to create and deliver critical services to address major issues facing our aging population, working with other local agencies to develop integrated, comprehensive strategies. Her contributions extend far beyond Denver. Through her service on Dr. Cog's Advisory Committee on Aging, Perla's expertise produces solutions other member governments can emulate. A key architect of the Age Matters Needs Assessment, based on Dr. Cog's Boomer Bond, Perla's work for the region has resulted in meaningful improvements that help older adults live fulfilling, independent lives. Thank you for your service. Phil Greenwald brings nearly three decades of experience to transportation planning. In his role with the city of Longmont, Phil has taken his commitment to transportation safety to the next level. With a deep understanding of how commute options can improve quality of life, Phil advocates for choice in how we get around the region. By leveraging various funding opportunities, Phil finds creative ways to improve mobility with a focus on making all modes of travel safer for everyone using our roads and trails. As an active member of multiple regional transportation coalitions, boards, and commissions, Phil's service to the community spans far beyond the city he calls home. And as a former employee at Dr. Cog, he has long exemplified collaboration across regional boundaries. Congratulations, Phil. Historically, Dr. Cog has relied on public sector partnerships to acquire data for projects. But the organization's recent work with Evan Kirby of Diaxes represents a new future for public and private partnerships in the Denver region. When Dr. Cog was seeking a data set to better understand how to design sidewalks in the Denver region, the partnership with Diaxes allowed the organization to use data that would otherwise be cost prohibitive to collect, resulting in a greater understanding of what makes a sidewalk usable. Evan's willingness to commit private resources to bolster the data Dr. Cog uses in regional planning demonstrates both his and his organization's commitment to improving quality of life for residents, while leading to better outcomes that encourage other partners to contribute their resources toward the collective public good. Thank you, Evan, for your work improving life in the Denver region. In her role with the Veterans Affairs Eastern Colorado Healthcare System, 
Bridget Lee coordinates care services for more than 200 disabled veterans and their caregivers. Her work helps veterans explore options for their care. As the only veteran-directed care program coordinator for the 14-county area she serves, Bridget is a dependable resource for veterans who, thanks to her work, can choose how they receive care, maintaining their independence for as long as possible. As the bridge between veterans and the resources they need to thrive, Bridget has created a compassionate environment where veterans can efficiently access services. She also serves as an essential resource to the Dr. Cog Area Agency on Aging, working closely with case managers to advocate for the needs of veterans in the Denver region. Her job isn't easy. She's often pulled in many directions and the need for the work she does is never ending. But by remaining positive and committed, Bridget represents a beacon of hope for veterans. Thank you for your tireless advocacy. I want to give a hearty congratulations to all of you for your incredible service to our region. Each of you has contributed to what makes the Denver area so special. And speaking of notable individuals who have devoted their lives to public service, let's pivot to our next trivia question featuring some well-known names. Now, most of you probably know since its founding in 1955, Dr. Cog is one of the oldest councils of government in the entire nation. But how many of you know the name of the Denver mayor, mayor who worked with Arapaho, Jefferson, Boulder, and Adams counties to form what would eventually become Dr. Cog? Once you see the choices appear on your screen, go ahead and pick the one that you think is correct. All right, this one, it goes way back. So I'm looking at all of you history buffs for the correct answer. If you picked Denver Mayor Quig Newton, you are correct. And if you didn't give it, get it, give yourself a little break. This was a pretty tough one. All right, so now that I have everyone's attention, we're gonna move on to our next slate of award winners. While the Distinguished Service Awards focused on the efforts made by individuals, we'll now be honoring programs and projects that contribute to the unique character of our region. The Metro Vision Awards represent a shared vision and commitment to healthy growth among our member governments. The programs we recognize this afternoon are collaborative initiatives that improve the quality of life for residents and encourage all of us to become active participants in planning our region's future. This year, we honor five projects that represent our region's ideal. The judges who selected the organizations and programs we're recognizing today include Allie Angleton, Executive Director of Community Development at the Denver Broncos Football Club, Andrea Flores of CBS4, and Dorothy Jones, Director of Public Affairs at the Denver Metro Chamber of Commerce. So here are this year's winners, starting with a groundbreaking new partnership between Lyft and the city and county of Denver to expand the region's use of electric vehicles for ride-sharing programs. Denver region residents agree clean air is fundamental to our quality of life. But as our population and the number of cars on the road increases, air pollution from fossil fuels threatens our health. Investments in cleaner transportation technology play an important role in safeguarding the region's air quality by leveraging local policies that incentivize green transportation solutions. Lyft has grown its fleet of electric vehicles, pledging to offer only electric vehicles by 2030. The investment benefits everyone who uses, builds, or maintains electric vehicle infrastructure including Lyft drivers who can save between $70 and $100 per week by driving an EV. In partnership with the City of Denver and agencies like Electrify America, RTD, and CDOT, Lyft is creating innovative solutions to offer residents quicker, cleaner, and more efficient ways to move around our fast-growing region. The partnership floors the acceleration on the region's progress, improving the region's air quality consistent with Metro Vision's calls for cleaner air and lower greenhouse gas emissions.
But electric vehicles are lower operational cost. They have lower fuel cost and they have lower maintenance cost. The vehicles have displaced, you know, tens of thousands of, of gallons of gasoline, uh, tens of thousands of tons of carbon dioxide, and reduced particulate matter in in the Denver metro area since there are no tailpipe emissions. Giving residents environmentally friendly options for getting around reduces air pollution and gets us closer to achieving our clean energy future. Congratulations, Lyft. Thank you, Lyft, and all your partners for your commitment to improving air quality and expanding access to electric vehicle infrastructure and in here in our region. Our very next award today goes to one of our critical institutions and services, the Denver Public Library, for its Older Adult Services Program. Coloradans love everything our state has to offer, from the vast outdoors to our thriving art scene. It seems like the Denver region has something for people of all ages. And as the number of residents in our state grows, finding the ways to engage our rapidly increasing older adult population has become a priority for organizations like Denver Public Library. Through its Older Adult Services program, the Denver Public Library gives older residents an outlet to explore potential in new ways. My goal for our older adult services is I want it not to be a time that people dread, but a time that people are excited about, a time where they can be their best selves, and I want to help them do that. Um, I want to help them have a really high quality of life. So I just feel really proud that I'm empowering older adults to take charge of their older adulthood and make it as meaningful as they possibly can. Today's curriculum launched in 2019 focuses on the distinct emotional, social and cognitive needs for older adults during all stages of aging. In partnership with more than 60 local organizations, including the library, they develop a curriculum ranging from technology education to health and wellness outreach to strategies on how to combat ageism. The library also offers the Memory Cafe where people experiencing memory loss and their caregivers can socialize and relax together in a stigma-free environment. By offering older adults a variety of ways to enrich their lives, the Denver Public Library hopes to transform what it means to age. The program also helps older adults maintain a connection to their community, particularly through intergenerational opportunities to interact with people of all ages. Providing library users with a vibrant community where they can thrive is key to our region's Metro vision. It's a win-win for older adults and the neighbors who benefit from their valuable participation in the region's lifelong communities. Congratulations, Denver Public Library. Boy, that was a powerful one. I, for one, am absolutely incredibly thank you for the library's work and their commitment to really helping our older adult community and their caregivers find a safe haven where they can thrive. So next, we will look at an innovative development project that brings residents the best of all worlds, affordable housing, outdoor recreation, and convenient access to transit. Affordable housing improves lives, leading to better health, career opportunities, and financial stability, but in the Denver region, affordable housing is hard to come by. Habitat for Humanity of Metro Denver's Sheridan Square project is making housing more accessible in a creative way, taking a four-acre elementary school site and converting it into 63 energy-efficient townhomes, 
close to the new Sheridan Square Park and public transit. The homes are priced well below average for the region and went to qualified applicants who invested 200 hours building the neighborhood as part of Habitat for Humanity's Sweat Equity Program. The project leveraged private and public partnerships and the city of Sheridan engaged the community throughout the process by holding public hearings and transparently addressing resident concerns. Ultimately, the partnership yielded a proposal that meets the needs of both current and future residents. We worked with 20,000 volunteers over three years to build these 63 homes. And now we have more than 300 people living in these homes. All of the homeowners helped to build their homes, working alongside volunteers. So this community really came together from the ground up. The development of Sheridan Square adds a distinct landmark to the historic Fort Logan neighborhood, while the new Sheridan Square Park serves as an important community gathering space. Plus, the project provides a model that can be adapted in other regions to create an affordable community where people can enjoy recreation or access the outdoors and choose how they commute. Congratulations, Habitat for Humanity of Metro Denver. Awesome project. I'm sure a lot of you will agree that the best part of this project is the emotional and physical investment that residents at Sheridan Square have put into their community. All right, the next project that we'll be recognizing today looks at two seemingly disparate issues, conservation and homelessness, to develop a community-oriented program that achieves multitudes. What strategies can Mountain West communities use to connect people experiencing homelessness with resources that could improve their lives? Through the Interagency Council on Homeless Encampments, or NEACH, the town of Nederlin and Boulder County are exploring ways to answer this question. The groundbreaking program is a collaboration between local government offices in Nederland and Boulder County, human services organizations, and the Nederland Community Presbyterian Church. Together, these agencies find ways to protect the health and safety of people camping and educate campers on how to best preserve our shared public lands. By building trust between community members, local law enforcement, and groups that manage public lands, the group created an environment where open and ongoing dialogue can occur. Through outreach and education around fire safety and strategies for preserving our shared outdoor spaces, the program prioritizes the well-being of residents and the lands they inhabit. So the niche program has hired a homeless advocate, someone who spends the summers reaching out to anyone who might be camping in the area. The advocate will go out to the campsites, uh, meet people, uh, try to first connect them to resources that are down the hill in Denver and Boulder for issues they might face. And if they're not prepared to go back down to an urban area, we try to teach them how to camp in a safer way for themselves and for the community. We've created that model to be both compassionate and to organize safety, and we hope that can spread in places and be adapted where it needs to be adapted. The program has created a system where human service providers from different areas like healthcare, law enforcement, and social work can collaborate to help people experiencing homelessness. This model also creates space for campers to engage in community activities and participate in programs with other residents. Congratulations, Town of Nederland. Boy, that last example truly shows that conserving our natural spaces can also contribute to our neighbors' well being. And now we're going to head into recognizing our final Metro Vision winner. This program builds human connections between community residents and business owners, something that we've really seen the importance of over the last year. Let's watch.
As online shopping makes it harder for traditional stores to stay in business, vacant storefronts are a familiar and discouraging sight. What can cities and towns do to create a sense of community between businesses and consumers? The city of Centennial has a novel idea. You have this change in retail, you have people going you know, to online shopping, and how are you going to re revitalize these shopping centers and what's their purpose now? Their purpose is really community focused, community gathering places, and you need to have something there that's ex an experience that people can have when they go. and get people to go back into those centers and realize that there's a lot of great things there and interesting things to go see, and it's part of your community, so go check it out. The pilot program gave funds to local organizations to invest in community events and activities to draw residents to their businesses. Not only did the renewed attention lead to increased sales, but the community also built a sense of connection and community between residents and business owners. In 2019, the city selected five events and installations to fund, including the Streets of South Glen 10th Anniversary Celebration and a neighborhood block party featuring live music, barbecue, and a crawfish boil. The event led to a 20% increase in sales for the barbecue business. The city of Centennial is leading the way in addressing the needs of local businesses and organizations, establishing a vibrant regional economy where consumers play an active role in maintaining an environment that's beneficial for businesses. By crafting a strategy based on public feedback, Centennial gives residents a sense of place and an investment in their communities economic future. Congratulations, City of Centennial. Boy, we're really ending on a great note there. Great example. It really showcases the resilience of our communities and the vibrancy of our local economies. What wonderful examples of what the region can achieve, especially when we put our heads together to really protect unique and vibrant communities. All right, we- Thank you, Amelia, for helping us to honor the success of these incredible community programs. And a very special thanks for sharing your time with us today to help us celebrate our region and recognize the people and organizations that improve our quality of life. Because we ended up postponing until today, this celebration that would have happened in the spring of 2020, we're actually honoring two outgoing chairs. I'd like to take a moment to recognize the service of someone who's been working quietly behind the scenes on behalf of our entire region. I'd like to take this moment to recognize my immediate predecessor, John Dyack. John's been serving on the Dr. Cog Board of Directors since he was selected by the Town of Parker in 2013. He served as a board officer for the past four years culminating with the term of chair from March 2019 until February of this year. John is an eminently humble leader of the Board of Directors, advocating for an even-keeled approach during this incredibly challenging time. The COVID-19 pandemic began to affect Colorado very shortly into his term as chair. As a result, all of our committee and board meetings were conducted virtually for the entire extent of the this actually resulted in an impressive savings of nearly 50,000 vehicle miles traveled and 1,000 hours of travel time by board directors. Way to go, John! <laughs> John's leadership and support helped the organization pivot quickly to meet the critical needs of our aging adult population, which obviously was severely impacted during the pandemic. And while John was actively involved in notable projects such as Safer Main Streets Initiative, he may be best remembered for fostering and nurturing the collaborative spirit that made so successful. During his term, our directors voted with unanimity on the board priorities. We've set a clear direction for the organization and everything it did thanks to John's leadership. Thank you, John. I know the attendees of today's event are eager to hear from you. Thank you very much, Ashley. Um, very kind words. Uh, I, I was very humbled to be uh, chair of Dr. Cog. Um, uh, as, as I approach this, um, this time, I, I think back and I'm trying to figure out the uh, best words to uh, to give, and uh, one is collaboration. Uh, the board is very collaborative and um, very supportive. So again, thank you so much to the board. When I came on in 2013, and and the current board as well, <clears throat> I, I appreciate the um, current staff, uh, how we came together in challenging times. 
there are um, there are multitudes of staff members uh, who who I can uh, talk about, but three specifically: uh, Melinda, Lisa, and Cam. Thank you so much for for making all the meetings that um, that went on look so seamless. And we, we also had two uh, two staff members, Roxy, who um, who who left. She retired, and uh, Connie uh, Garcia. Unfortunately, she uh, she passed away. But those two people at the very beginning were, were one of the driving forces for me to get to, to being here. So again, thank you so much for everybody. Um, truly appreciate it, an ultimate honor. I was the first town of Parker um, a council member uh, to be chair and hopefully will not be the last. And as we know, serving on the board allows each of us to further our commitment to civic leadership. And for board officers especially, we are indebted to those who came before us. It is my pleasure to recognize the service of Bob Pfeiffer, my immediate predecessor, as board chair from March 2018 until February 2019. Bob has represented the city of Aurora on the board of directors since his appointment in December of 2013. As chair, Bob demonstrated a thoughtful pragmatism that enabled the board to grapple with even challenging topics. His skillful moderation ensured that all who came to the table could share their perspectives, especially those who might have otherwise been reluctant to speak up. During his time as board chair, Bob presided over the culmination of a years long process to redefine the transportation improvement program into a dual model. This resulted in identifying regions, regional investments, as well as county level portfolios of transportation funding priorities for inclusion in the program. He has also ushered um, important programs like regional vision In the transportation voucher program what I remember is the is the many hours of conversation um, uh, that, that Bob and I had had both in our vat in Parker Bob thank you for your service please take a moment to share some of your, your remarks please Hey, thanks, uh, John. Thank you for uh, the the comments. And I know you kind of glitched out. That's probably the the day of being remote. Um, but one thing I, I you know fond memory of of the board is is our ugly sweater uh, holiday board meeting. So I I always uh, reflect on that and how fun that was. But yes, thank you very much, John. Just like the spirit of Christmas uh, Carol. I am the chair of Dr. Cog Past. Some may recall a distant past where we were all together and one day we'll be back together. Uh, this week is a fitting week for Dr. Cog and the awards. Uh, this is National Work Zone Awareness Week, focusing on being safe while remaining vigilant in areas where road construction and maintenance is taking place. And that's near and dear as we focus on transportation and mobility as Dr. Cog. I want to recognize the extraordinary work by the Dr. Cog team and their impacts on our region every day at all levels. Their passion and dedication in transportation and mobility, regional planning and aging and disability resources for our region is much appreciated by all of our communities. I wanna thank the board for the opportunity to serve you, Dr. Cog, Dr. Cog's team and our region. I'm humbled and honored to have been your chair for Dr. Cog past. So, Amelia, would you please help us introduce the next section of our program? All right. Thank you so much. We are just thrilled to have all of you here at the event today. We also, of course, want to thank Chairs Pfeiffer, Dyack, and Stolzman for your exemplary service. Now, during your terms, you have done so much behind the scenes to ensure the success of our region. Well, we're finally to the most exciting moment of our program. We've been waiting to celebrate the next winner of the John B. Christensen Memorial Award for more than a year. So let's get right to it. Once again, we'd like to thank presenting sponsor and partner, Excel Energy, for their commitment to generosity of our region. Now, thank you so much to Excel and to all of our sponsors for making today's celebration possible. Board Chair Ashley Stolzman, would you tell us a little bit more about the John B. Christensen Memorial Award? And it's also your privilege today to reveal the recipient of this year's award. So take it away. Thank you, Amelia. 
John D. Christensen was an Arapahoe County Commissioner and one of Dr. Cog's co-founders. He demonstrated a personal commitment to working towards strong representative local government. He promoted regional approaches to problem solving and encouraged his fellow elected officials to do so as well. Mr. Christensen and leaders like him have set the stage for enduring collaborative character for our entire region. It's in his name that we award our highest honor. The John B. Christensen Memorial Award was first presented in 1973. Last year, the award was presented to Kathy Noon, who championed her community in the most fundamental way possible by contributing to the very formation of the city of Centennial and ultimately becoming its mayor. We've been keeping the award winner's name under wraps until now, but we're ready to recognize this individual's momentous achievement. I'm more than pleased to announce this year's award winner is an individual who's always put uh, himself ahead of others. He served for nearly, nearly 30 years in Air Force, including judge advocate and senior legal advisor. The winner has been the cornerstone of the community with a particular commitment to its credit unions, firefighters, and even though he's retired from elected leadership, he's continued to mentor countless elected officials throughout the region. The 45th recipient of the John D. Christensen Memorial Award is former mayor of Greenwood Village, Ron Rickey. Let's enjoy a short biographical video about Ron. Great places don't just happen, they're built by great people dedicated to improving their communities and working toward common regional goals. The Denver Regional Council of Governments is proud to present its highest honor, the John V. Christensen Award, to former mayor of Greenwood Village, Ron Rakowski. Mayor Rakowski has dedicated his life to public service, including time with the Air Reserve Personnel Center and the Pentagon, where he provided major input into the development of the Department of Defense AIDS policy and drug testing program. His rich career also includes work as an attorney, a lobbyist for Colorado's credit unions, and a trade association executive. He calls Greenwood Village home and has served his community on city council, was elected mayor pro tem, and finally in 2011, mayor. He served as the city's mayor until 2019. As mayor of the city of Greenwood Village, Ron went above and beyond attending nearly every community event, public meeting, and neighborhood get-together possible. Ron has always been heavily involved in state and local boards such as Dr. Cog, Denver South, E-470, Metro Mayor's Caucus, and the Arapahoe County Justice Coordinating Committee. Throughout his career, Ron leveraged an understanding of the significant value businesses contribute to the vibrancy of our region. He's built strong partnerships among neighboring cities and organizations, fostering regional cooperation and working closely with public agencies like Arapahoe County, the City of Centennial, and the Colorado Department of Transportation. His contributions aided in the development near I-25 and Arapahoe Road in Greenwood Village, which improved residents' access to transit. As mayor, Ron touched the lives of Coloradans through service, kindness, and genuine investment in the health of the community. He is encouraging the next generation to participate in public service. He's also mentored many incoming mayors and leaders through the region. Dr. Cog's most prestigious award is named for one of its founding members, Arapahoe County Commissioner John V. Christensen. This year, the John V. Christensen Award goes to an individual whose tireless work has made his community and our region a great place to live, work, and play. There really is no more deserving a person that could win the award than Ron Rakowski. I was honored to join my fellow board officers and Mayor George Lamb, who's also on our board of directors at Greenwood Village City Hall earlier this month to honor Ron in person in a small socially distant gathering. A number of Ron's former colleagues, friends, and people he's mentored over the years, and of course, most importantly, his wife Margaret, were there to help us mark the occasion. Let's watch some highlights from the event. We had originally planned to host our gala at Empower Field at Mile High, I just call it Mile High Stadium, in April of 2020. <clears throat> Now, the reason we had to plan it for Mile High Stadium is because we all knew 
if we were going to celebrate Mayor Rakowski, we would need an entire stadium because everybody would definitely come to celebrate that. There, there's almost not a person in the Dr. Cog region that doesn't know this man and hasn't been touched in a positive way by Ron's hard, tireless efforts over time. This award honors someone who truly embodies that collaborative approach, a true champion of regionalism, and a very deserving of Dr. Cog's highest honor. So without further ado, it gives me exceedingly great pleasure to present the John V. Christensen Memorial Award to the former Greenwood Village Mayor and former Dr. Cog Board Director, Ron Rakowski. Congratulations, Mayor Rakowski. Those remarks are more than humbling, and I thank you very much for them, Mayor Stoltzman. I guess I kind of a community project. Uh, at least at times I feel that uh, the people uh, treated me as somebody to try and make smart because they're not sure you can make it on his own. And they were right. Light rail was a big part of when I was involved in all of this. And I got to know Cal Marcel, the late Cal, Mar Cal Marcella and Phil Washington who's now out in L.A. Uh, and I remember sitting in uh, Phil's office when he talked about how we were going to do the Aurora R line, which I will point out was named after me. <laughs> An attempt at a little bit of a laugh. Uh, thank you. <laughs> we so, all just believed you. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Another wonderful thing happened was representing Dr. Khan in its statutory role, um, E-470 participant. Most people don't realize that the law that set up E-470 required two non-voting seats on the board, one for Dr. Khan and the other for CEDA. And I got to do that. And that was great learning all the stuff that goes with multi-billion dollar budgets uh, and all the wonderful things E-470 has done. It's really been a great contribution. And then the greatest thing about Dr. Cog was the people you meet. Lastly, uh, as many of you re will remember, that uh, some of our meetings would go late. Like, I wouldn't get home till almost midnight sometimes. And that is where I want to bring in probably the most successful piece of my Dr. Cog board and membership, and that was my dear wife, Margaret, who put up with all the late nights and, and empty dinners. In closing, let me point out that I've either lived, or we have either lived, with family connections in each major part of the United States, New England, Florida, Texas, California, the Northwest, and by far, the greatest place to live is here in the Rocky Mountain West, particularly because uh, there are certain advantages to the high desert, which is where, what we are, and people forget about that. So with that, I am honored. Thank you very much for the award, and uh, continue the great work that you guys do in Dr. Khan. Thank you. Well, a big congratulations to Mayor Rakowski for earning this well-deserved honor. I'm sure that all of us here in this broadcast will always think of him when we hop on the R-Line. Well, as we wrap up today's event, I'd like to once again acknowledge our presenting sponsor, Excel Energy. It's because of our sponsor's generosity that we were able to make attendance free for all who wanted to celebrate with us. Our gold sponsors include AECOM, Commute with Enterprise, EST Inc., HDR Engineering, Innovest, Lawan, and Michael Baker International. We're also extremely grateful for those who made this event possible at the nonprofit level. And a very special thank you to all of our member governments, whether you sponsored today's celebration with a contribution, have attendees here today, or were honored with an award. So this event is all about recognizing you and the work that you do. 
It's been an honor celebrating once again here with you today. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your host. We look forward to celebrating in person with you next year as well. So make sure you save the date for April 27th. 2022. We're hoping to see you all at Empower Field at Mile High.